All right, so this video is gonna be about the Arrhenius equation. And in using the Arrhenius equation, the main uh, question that we're trying to figure out is how does the temperature affect the rate of a chemical reaction? So if we turn our attention to a general rate law, suppose we have one reactant, the rate law says that the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the reactant raised to a power. And the power is called the order of the reaction with respect to this reactant. Now, when it comes to the temperature dependence on a reaction rate, well, the temperature dependence can't really lie in the concentration. In, in other words, if I have six molar that six molar is going to be, it's still going to be six molar whether I had it at 20 Kelvin or, you know, 2000 Kelvins. So that means that the temperature dependence of the rate of a chemical reaction must somehow lie in the rate constant K. And in general, the way that we quantify the temperature dependence on the rate constant and thus the, the temperature dependence on the overall rate of the chemical reaction is by this equation. K equals A times E to the negative EA over RT. K as we know is the rate constant. The parameter A, this is called the frequency factor. Lowercase e, that's just a mathematical constant. And keep in mind, we are raising this whole thing, this whole division problem here is being, we're raising e to the power of this whole thing. E sub a is what we call the activation energy. And that's typically presented in uh, kilojoules per mole. And R is the gas constant. So when you see the equation, for instance, PV equals NRT for gas laws, we're talking about the same R. And this R just happens to be 8.314 joules over moles times kelvins. And T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. So given any three of these terms, the frequency factor, the activation energy, or the absolute temperature, we can solve for whichever one, excuse me, given two of these terms, we can solve for the unknown term. Remember, R is always going to be the same. It's simply a constant, so it doesn't change at all. The only things that change are the temperature, the activation energy, and the frequency factor. So let's get into uh, what the activation energy is a, a little bit more. So suppose we have the following graph. Let's see if we can fit that in here. On our x-axis, we have reaction progress. There we go. And then on the y-axis we have energy. And for any chemical reaction, the energy versus reaction progress diagram looks sort of like this. So 
So over on the left, we have the energy of the reactants, and over on the right here, we have the energy of the products. Now, in general, uh, if we want to get any chemical reaction started, if we, if we want it to occur at all, we must input a certain value of energy, and that is what we call the activation energy. So this hump, for instance, we have to get over that hump when it comes to energy for, in order to get the reaction to occur at all. So this energy between this hump and the energy of the reactants, that is actually the activation energy that we've just termed uh, E sub A. And the frequency factor A, um, you can sort of think as the uh, of the frequency factor as um, just sort of a you know a number that represents the approaches that that the reaction the, that the reactants take towards reaching this uh, activation energy barrier. So just because we approach the activation energy barrier doesn't mean that we have surmounted it. And basically, that's that's what this parameter A is meant to measure. So hopefully this helps out. And actually one more thing, let's go over a couple of tips as to how to solve problems using the Arrhenius equation. Notice that the activation energy is given in kilojoules per mole generally, and the gas constant is in joules over moles times kelvins. So one of these has joules and the other has kilojoules. So when you want to solve a problem, you have to make sure your units cancel, always, right? So if this happens to you, if you ever have joules in one thing and kilojoules in another, what you need to do is convert from one of these to the other. So we're going to either convert the gas constant into kilojoules or we're going to convert the activation energy into joules. Also note that the temperature is in kelvins, so if you're given a Celsius temperature, you must convert that Celsius temperature into kelvins. And I believe I do have a video on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. So that is an introduction on how to use the Arrhenius equation.